It's been a week since the dramatic events on top of the old Broad Street Bank building. Tonight, we relive the incredible rescue with some of the Trenton firefighters. April 5th, a call goes out around 9.30 a.m. A man on the roof, possibly suicidal, the mission to bring him down safely. Early on, rescue workers had a tough time communicating with the man, but then a break. At one point, Chief Heyman handed me a set of binoculars and wanted me to keep an eye on the individual on the roof, and he looked a little familiar to me from the street through the binoculars. And then I had heard the police behind me say that we had an ID on the guy, and um, he had been through the rescue mission and maybe at the crisis center once before, and that he might be deaf. So then the next time I went to look through the binoculars, he was standing forward at the street, and that was the first time I had a, a view of his face. And when I looked through the binoculars, I said, yeah, I said to myself, yeah, I know that guy. Recognizing the man as David Ross from church, fireman John Snee, who learned sign language because his sister is deaf, quickly rushes to the top to try to make contact. But Captain John Barone and others knew it wasn't going to be easy. He looked at us with a, with a, a sharp eye saying, don't tempt me, basically, is what he was, his message was. Don't tempt me, don't come closer because I'm going to jump. As the scene along East State Street grows with onlookers, high above, firefighter John Snee gets in touch with David Ross using the basics. When I went up there, um, one thing I had always practiced with my sister, we, we used to tease each other, who could sign faster their name? And John in sign language is like, is like that. And so I figured when I go up there, do something that I, I'm confident with and make my first impression a good one. But getting eye contact with this guy was hard. He's like Captain Barone said, he was fixed on what he was doing. He really wasn't paying attention to anybody on the roof. And at one point, he was actually looking through his shirt straight down the bottom of the scaffold. I think that was the first time I made eye contact with him. When I did, I, I, I looked up and I said, I go, my name is John, like that. And he, he went, you know, he looked a little startled that I signed back to him. And then I said, I know you. He was tired, tired of life. He was tired that he had, a, he, he kept telling me, you have a job, you get paid, you help your family. I don't have a job. I had a job and he got fired. And he goes, I'm tired, I'm tired. I'm tired, I want to go home. And he said God wanted him to jump. I said, I don't think God wants you to jump. Standing 180 feet above the ground, battling gusty winds and frigid temperatures, rescuers move in to get a jacket to the man, and then finally, another break. The turning point, I think, would be when Johnny invited him to the firehouse. He liked the idea of um, coming to the firehouse for a meal. He said over and over that he loved firemen. And we, in return, told him that we love him and that, you know, we're, we don't want him to jump. And I kept saying, you know, we'll come to the firehouse, you and me. And, and it seemed like when I isolated it to just him and I and nobody else, he said, you promise? And I said, I promise. The dramatic and dangerous six-hour rescue ends when David Ross is embraced with a hug as he finally comes down. And maybe it was a sign from above or the signing from a firefighter, but all the hard work of the rescue workers saved David Ross's life. Reporting in Trenton, Brian Bossler, WZBN News.